Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, two blokes chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. Hey, I'll, tell you what I, I'll tell you what I'm impressed with. A couple of weeks ago, I was fortunate enough to be able to use uh, the legislation to enable me to get to Mildura. And to get to Mildura, one drives through the beautiful little town of Oyun, and it is there where we go on Regional Roundup this morning. We're going off to Oyun to talk to Tracy Lawson. Good morning to you, Tracy. Good morning, gents. How are you? Doing very, very well indeed. Drove through there the other day. Wasn't allowed to stop under the rules of the exemptions. But my goodness gracious me, next time I'm able to get up there and I'm allowed to stop, I'm going to meet you in the front bar of the pub and we are going to have a cold drink on a warm afternoon. We will, and then we may even grab a six-pack and take it up to the lake on an on a even warmer evening and sit up there and have a drink. Yeah, but if I'm getting to Mildura, that's probably not advisable <laughs> because we do, of course, only condone drinking in moderation, you understand. Don't be miserable. Spend okay, the night in the right. motel all and right, kick no, the enough. local business along. All right, fair enough. Uh, Tracy, how are things out at the lake? The lake is looking superb at the moment, fellas. We've, um, it's, it's full to the brim. It's got fish jumping in it. Uh, we're moving slowly but steadily towards uh, our camping areas and that sort of thing. And it's just, it's just a real little oasis. And, and heading into our long summer months, I already know it's going to have an absolute flogging this year. <laughs> Now, we have a regular fishing correspondent. Uh, He'll be on next Saturday morning. Neil, mental note, please talk to John Didge about the Oyen Lake. Indeed. Because uh, we're we're trying to get people, uh, the purpose of this sort of discussion, to get people out of their houses when best they can and get into regional Victorian and and see some sights. And apart from vanilla slices, you now have a lake. So Oyen is very much on the tourist map. Most definitely. There's there's actually a lot to see around here. We're um, we're central to a lot of areas. So if you want to head to the Hatter the Hatter Lakes National uh, Parks up there, you can do it from Oyun. You can head to Patchewolik, and that's uh, an outback Victoria experience on its own, right on our doorstep. And of course, we have our lake stocked with brown trout, a uh, rainbow trout. Sorry and golden and silver perch, all at catchable sizes. So becoming very popular with the fishermen. And I've got to say, and I know he won't mind me because he'll probably enjoy the plug, uh, you've got a man who lives in your town called Nathan, and he is, apart from probably providing language that's a little bit more colourful than we would allow on the radio, generally speaking, makes a damn good sausage. And uh, if you're going up there, don't worry about taking meat from here. Get up there and support the uh, the cleverly named Oyen Butcher, I think is what it's called, <laughs> but uh, he does a very fine snag. He does indeed, and I've got to thoroughly recommend the uh, the pork sausages as well, and uh, a mighty fine T-bone, and mm. we'll have our barbecue area up and running before too long at, at the lake, so I'd actually say... Grab a beer, grab a T-bone and head to the lake. Magnificent. And one of the things that people don't... Uh, I, I, I was, You know, you sort of see something, you go, wow. Well, I, I, that was very much my reaction with the lake when I saw it. But the colour of it, like you think you know, a lake in the country, it's going to be that murky, horrible brown colour. It's blue. It is. It's a beautiful colour blue. If you check out our Facebook page or that, it, you'll see the colour of it. Now, we drain it every night and repaint the bottom of it. It's mm. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the sad thing, Tracy, is the people who listen to our program probably believe you. <laughs> probably would. Uh, Certainly Tracy, Rob does. Tracy, you mentioned something earlier which got to me thinking. Uh, we, we talk a lot about footy on this, this show, and we talk about the importance of football to small country towns. And you mentioned uh, Patchy Wallach. The most wonderful football team that I'd ever heard of in my life was Tempe Gory Patchy Wallach. Uh, that's a beautiful name. Is it still in existence, or is it like many continued to fold into other teams, uh, other small towns? That's exactly right. Uh, TGP, that we shortened it down to. Oh, why would you want to shorten that beautiful flowing name? It just <laughs> flows straight off the lips. I love it. 
You say it five times in the sentence talking about it during... <laughs> After you've been out for a couple of beers at the lake too. <laughs> yeah, and, and try and scream it from the sidelines. Yeah, that's yeah. a bit difficult. Yeah. 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 Exactly, especially after the aforementioned hunt. <laughs> this usually imbibed at a country footy game. Uh, there was a team down in uh, Gippsland that played in the Elberton League, and I always get the, the name wrong, so the, this will be out of order, but it was Devon, Woodside, Wonron, which is W O N W R O N, Welsh Pool. So they were D W W W W. Football club. So their website was www.dwwww.com.au and they were called the Allies. <laughs> that makes sense. So, what's happening up there? Well, obviously, COVID stopped you from playing footy for a period of time, which it takes a bit out of that country town culture. But um, where, what's the state of Tempe Gory Patchy Wallach these days? Uh, TGP over the years folded into a couple of other, amalgamated with a couple of other sides. And uh, about 2016, they all amalgamated our local um, football league, folded, and they all our local teams amalgamated into what became O-Union United. So it, it had taken a, quite a few years. Um, to do it and the very last step was the amalgamation between uh, the Oyen football side and the Walpi Up Underball uh, team but before that um, Tempe Goy Apache had amalgamated into Oyen, uh, the aforementioned Oyen United and then we just kept rolling. Now anybody who has any idea of uh, small town living and, and country areas understands that there's quite a few rivalries when that happens. So for communities to absorb uh, what was almost play to the death sort of games and become a united team to take on somebody else, it's a big step. Yeah, it is. Uh, when I was lived in South Australia, there was a, a football club called Peak, which is in the Mallee part of... Uh, uh, Adelaide heading up, I'm oh, sorry, South Australia heading up towards the Murray and, and the historian worked out that, that the Peak Football Club was the amalgamation of originally 26 small community football teams that going back to the Second World War that had slowly just rolled and rolled and rolled. So um, by the time you get the O-Union United finished, you might finish up, well, it sounds like you've got 10 or 15 in there already. Uh, we're well into the 20s and Paul Daffy actually wrote a book about it several years ago and it's called The Totem Poles of, of the Mallee and, and that's exactly what happened. There were tiny football clubs from Tarita and Walpi Up and Delco and Goya and you name it and they've all over the years rolled into the behemoth that is now Union United. So um, it's a, it's been a long time coming but probably the length of settlement as well i'm going to sound like either a genius here or a complete idiot so run with me on either way uh, who do the kangaroos normally play against when they play their football these days so we're part of the sunraysia football league so we actually play against muldura um wentworth um robinvale south muldura uh, yep the imperials Dean. Yes, yep. Oh, look at us. We're just rolling them out. No, I, I, the idiot component was I, I was almost sure it was the kangaroos and I was going to look really silly if it was the bulldogs or something. Um, but right. the, the Vic Hotel in Oyun seems to be home base for the club, though. Is that So they are very much the oyun centric sort of club? Uh, uh, pretty well. Um, comprising uh, when they have events, they're either here in Oyun, but they do pay a lot of... Um, a lot of homage to where they come from. So there's nights out at the Patchewalik Hotel as well. There's nights out at Underbull at the, the Rec Reserve Centre out there. So they move around as best they can for a country town and that's part of what melds them all together realistically. So what else is happening in Oyun? We've, we've done the history of the Oyun Football Club. So what else is going on? We've got a couple of minutes left. 
Well, I'd like to tell you a little story that started in uh, 2018, if I can. Sure. Back to the lake and to the footy club as well. So 2018, we had a group of farmers from here who were doing okay at that point, and our neighbours across the river in Poon Carey, Broken Hill, low sort of areas, in the midst of a savage drought. So they organised from here for truckloads of hay to be transported up to to the Puncari area and beyond, and over seven um, double trailers left here, and along with all the hay and and uh, stock food and other supplies for farms, there were parcels for families and and essentials for home, and water which was in really low supply. Took it up there and spent a couple of days just establishing relationships and getting to know farmers and that up there, helping out where they could. And it was really well received, Um, built some beautiful relationships out of it. Come several weeks ago and the Onion Lake Committee got a message from one of the farmers that was helped out several years ago and he turned things around and was doing okay, not on top of the world, but doing okay and in a position now to express his thanks at at the help that was given. So he donated a pen of sheep to be sold at the local stock exchange at the sale yards. And because of his payback, paying it forward as it was, um, the the Lake Committee actually received an almost $8,000 donation from the one farmer. And, and and people just don't get it, do they, Tracy? Until they've lived in a town, uh, I mean, we we laughingly refer to Geelong as a regional town when, in fact, it's it's actually a regional city. Um, but when you've lived in a town like that, that is what it's all about, isn't it? It's just all about making sure that everybody um, is is helping each other out. As as much as you certainly can, and and these were neighbours. We consider them neighbours, and they were they were doing it really tough. And this little expedition, and I took photos of it as they were leaving town. Um, it included our school kids who were putting together Christmas presents for the kids up in that area because they knew they wouldn't get much this year. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know there were parcels of essentials for women to go up and that sort of thing. And it was as much as all of that that went, it was the camaraderie and probably the couple of besky full of beers that went from the Vic Hotel as well. Yeah. And they all got to sit around and talk. And that mental health aspect of something coming from here to there was incredible. But then also being able to repay it has, uh, has been just beautiful to watch and this repayment now comes straight across all our communities because we reap the benefit of it at the lake where everybody's set to enjoy it. Absolutely. That is absolutely sensational, uh, Tracy. Rob's had to go, sadly. He has to go and organise the next program, so he's rushed off into the other studio. So um, it's up to me now to say thank you for joining us. It's always great to have a chat to you and I, I promise you I will get there one of these days now that cool drink in a warm pub. I'm looking forward to it, Neil. (laughs) Lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much, Tracy. Tracy Lawson there from Oyen.